What's up everyone? It's Kelly and today actually I don't know what this video is. I guess it's a nail art video. Today I'm going to be doing a compilation of a ton of different ways to use jelly nail polish. Now I've already done a nail polish 101 video on jellies, what they are, how you can identify them, some basic ways to use them, but basically the short version is jelly polish is an intentionally sheer polish that looks like jelly or jello. And I've also done a video on how to do a jelly nail polish sandwich, which is basically when you layer a glitter polish between two layers of jelly polish. And I've done live streams on different jelly nail polish combos you can do. Basically, I love jelly nail polish and I want you to love jelly nail polish too. So we are back with another jelly video. Today I am teaching you some super beginner friendly, no tools nail art looks that you can do with jellies. Because seriously, jelly nail polish is the best shortcut to beginner friendly manicures. And I feel like they always tend to look professionally done because it kind of gives a little bit of that poly gel look. So I'm partnering up with Cirque Colors for today's video. If you haven't heard of them before, they're an independent nail polish brand that's based out of the US. They are 10 free, meaning they are free of 10 of the potentially harmful ingredients that are often found in nail polish. They are vegan, meaning they do not use any animal derived ingredients and they are cruelty free, meaning they do not test their products on animals. And let me tell you, they have been dominating the jelly nail polish game lately. They just released a couple of new collections that are are stunning jelly polishes. I have reviewed those, but I'm gonna be using some of my favorites in today's video. But yeah, we may as well just dive right into it because I have a lot to teach you. So let's get started. So for all of the manicures that I'm showing you in today's video, I am using the Cirque base coat. So I'll link that down in the description for anybody who is interested. So first I'm going to show you the absolute easiest manicure you can do. I'm doing a vertical one across my nail, but basically you can do it any way you want and with any jellies you want. I am using peach jelly and lavender sky. So what I'm doing is I'm painting half of the nail with the peach and I'm painting the other half with the lavender while it's still wet. So this is a key part of it. You want to make sure that the polishes are wet enough that they start to blend together. So I'm going to let that first coat dry even though it's not absolutely perfect because the more layers we do the more seamless it's going to look and I'm going to do some slight overlapping. So here I went in for that second coat after the first coat was dry and I put on the peach and and now I am putting on the lavender over it while the peach is still wet and I'm kind of just blending them together. So no sponges are involved, no cleanup required. It's super easy to do. And if you find that the line is a little noticeable, you can just go back and forth with the two colors until it blends seamlessly. Incredibly easy, definitely the easiest way to do a gradient in my opinion. And if you still feel like the gradient isn't perfect, you can always put on a top coat that kind of just blurs everything out. So this is Lumiere that I'm using. It's just a nice soft gold and it kind of softens that, that line up really nicely as well. So now that you've seen the easy way to do a gradient, let's jump off of that and make something slightly more complicated. This is actually the only design that I'm showing you that I'm using a tool for. So I am using a dotting tool, but it's super easy. And if you want, you can actually use the bottle brush for this. I'm just not confident enough in my cloud drawing skills. So what I'm doing is I'm actually doing a regular horizontal gradient here. I'm still using Lavender Sky because this is definitely one of my favorite jellies from them. And then I'm also using using this blue shade Morning Tide. So for that first layer, I'm basically doing the same thing as I did in the last manicure, just trying to make a nice beginning of a gradient. So I'm gonna let that dry and then I'm gonna go in with my dotting tool and I'm using the white polish Carpe Diem and I'm going to create some little clouds. So this manicure actually might be familiar if you watch my live streams on Twitch. This is a manicure that I did on Twitch and I absolutely fell in love with it. So I thought I would do a little shortened tutorial on here here as well. So basically I am just drawing some nice white clouds. You can also do this with a jelly polish if you want, but I really love that stark contrast. So now I'm actually going to go in and I'm going to do my second layer of this gradient, but I'm going to work over those clouds. So what it does is it actually kind of puts them into a little bit of perspective and it makes them look like they're a little bit deeper into the manicure. So this is almost like a jelly sandwich, but we're doing it with nail art instead of just one glitter or color. So then I'm going to let that second layer dry and then I'm going to go in with another layer of clouds. So it's really fun to do this because you can kind of place the clouds anywhere. You can even do a little bit of overlapping with clouds 
clouds in the background layers and it'll look really cool, but I had enough room on my nail to draw a couple of different clouds going on here. So drew a nice big one in the center. And then I went in and added into any areas that I thought were looking a little bit bare. So just in the corners, I had little pieces of clouds going on and you can actually stop here if you want. And this is a little bit more muted of a manicure, but I wanted to take it one step further. So once those second layer of clouds were dry, I went in with a third layer of the jellies and this is going to really complete the manicure. I absolutely love how this turned out because then we start to see that first layer of clouds really pushed back. You can see it's almost like a faded background image. So the more layers you add, the more depth you're going to have on the manicure. And as you go, you can even cover up any potential mistakes that you've made with the gradient by putting clouds over that area. And it just looks so beautiful. I can't believe how easy this manicure was. So next, I want to show you something a little bit funky. One thing that I hear a lot about jelly polishes from my followers is they don't like jellies because they feel that jelly manicures and jelly nail art are too soft and subtle for them. So I really wanted to put myself to the test, I took a bunch of really bright, beautiful jellies and I decided I was going to make a very loud watercolor manicure. And watercolor manicures are incredibly easy to do with jelly polish. Basically, you just place the jellies wherever you want on your nail and it's going to create this nice soft, it's very gradient like, but it's almost like this palette of watercolor, but I wanted to make it a little loud. So I actually took a glitter polish. This is Crystal Tokyo and this is a really beautiful iridescent polish. So it kind of changes a little bit based on what colors you have over and under it. So I wanted to start off, I just kind of randomly applied little patches on my nail of areas where I wanted the glitter to be. And that was kind of the base for this watercolor manicure. And I also had a very light base color of linen on there as well, just to give me a nice clean palette to work with. And then I started using my color. So I actually used a ton of colors in this manicure. You definitely don't have to use as many as me. I was just really having fun and I kind of got a little bit carried away, but I actually do love the way that it turned out. So I added a little bit of blue. I added a little bit of peach. I also went back in in with that purple. You'll notice that I use Morning Tide, this light blue, and Lavender Sky, this really beautiful lavender, a lot. I think these are probably my two favorite jellies that Cirque has done. There's just something very special about them because they have a little bit of like a milkiness to them. So you'll see that a lot in these manicures, but I wanted to go in with something really vibrant as well. So I took this shade XOXO jelly, which is a hot pink jelly and I started to blend that into the colors as well and I really love the way that it turned out but I also wanted another vibrant color in there to kind of even everything out so I took another pretty bright one this is the citron jelly and it's the super vibrant yellow and I added that along in some areas as well and then what I did was just kind of touch up any spaces that I thought weren't really blended in because the polish did start to dry by the time I was adding all of my colors. So I was kind of just doing this on a whim. I didn't have a plan. So I added a little bit more of that blue and then I added a little bit more of the peach as well. And at this point I could have stopped and I thought this looked really cool, but it still had a little bit of a subtle vibe to me. It does have that really nice watercolor palette going on. You can still see the glitter coming through, but I wanted to kind of double that up. So I added another layer of the glitter and I thought it was really fun because you can still see that background and you can see all of the different colors on my nails and it really looks like a watercolor splatter manicure going on. It was super fun and surprisingly not thick. One thing I love about jellies is as they dry, they really flatten out nicely. So it doesn't feel like you have a ton of layers on your manicure. Totally love how this one looked as well. Of course, I used a healthy dose of top coat for this. Moving on, I'm going to show you another really cool kind of manicure that's really building on the different types of jelly manicures that I've shown you so far. I'm using a ton of colors here and what I want to do is geode nail art. And I've done some simplified versions of nail art like this on my channel before, which I will link up in the cards, but I really love this look having like a crystal geode on the nails. So what I wanted to do is take a bunch of shades of blue and just slowly start to build that up onto my nails until it looks 
pretty crystally. So I started off with the shade Linen. I thought that having a white base would be a nice start for blending all of the colors. And as I went, I tried to go fairly quickly, but it is okay to let the polishes dry in between if you're worried about messing anything up because you can always blend the polishes just with the polish brush and adding a little bit more of your previous color. But what I ended up doing was just slowly building up with deeper shades of blue until it looked pretty crystally. I think this would actually look very cool with purple, but I also love the way that it looks blue. So you can see here, what I ended up doing was adding a little bit more of that linen shade because I wanted to blend it out a little bit better with that blue that I started to add. And then once I had that pretty satisfactory, I ended up going in with a deeper blue. And of course I'm using a bunch of shades here because I have a bunch of them. You really don't need that many different colors. You can work with as few colors as you want. The cool thing about jellies is they build up the more coats that you do. So if I just wanted to use the one blue and build it up to more and more coverage. That would also work really well. But since I have them, I figured I may as well use them. And then I wanted to add a little bit of sparkle. So I went in with Heart of Glass, which is a jelly that has iridescent shimmer in it. And then I wanted to add some sparkle around the outside as well, because at that point I was feeling pretty sparkly. So I added a little silver topper called Nimbus. And then I thought that it would look cool if there was a really deep, dark inner part of this crystal. So I went in with Spotted and this is a topper that I've talked about a lot recently. And I thought it just kind of added a little bit more of a geode look. And I was really happy with how this turned out. I don't think that I'm the best at doing geode nail art, but the more I do it, the more I realize that it really doesn't take much effort or artistic ability. It's really just about kind of building up the colors and putting them in the right spot on the nail. And again, I wanted to have a nice thick layer of top coat over all of this because I was working with a lot of layers, but it ended up leveling out really nicely. So if you really want to play around with jellies, but you don't want to have that visible nail line on your nails, there are other ways that you can do them as well. So this next part, I'm going to be showing you a couple of different ways to use jellies while having your visible nail line fully covered. So I'm just going in with a black base color. And this is something that I love to do with iridescent polishes. So this is an iridescent jelly that I have, and it looks like a really beautiful pinky red on the nails by itself. But when you put it over black, it completely changes color. It's super fun to experiment with polishes like these because you can change the way that they feel. And I always joke that it feels like two nail polishes polishes in one, but you can experiment with putting jellies, especially shimmery jellies over other colors and see how they change. One other thing you can do is combine different jellies over a solid base color. So in this case, I took that pink shade XOXO jelly and I put it over the iridescent jellies so that it would go back to the sort of reddish pinky shade. And that ended up giving me a completely different look as well, but it's still a nice, deep, dark, sparkly manicure. It just kind of depends on the mood, you can shift around the color. So now let's take that idea one step further. Once again, I'm gonna have a black base on my manicure so you don't have to worry about a visible nail line. And what I'm gonna do is I'm adding a layer of silver glitter shards and that looks pretty cool on its own, but I'm gonna show you how you can do a little bit of nail art. So I'm taking two different jelly colors, the XOXO jelly and the cobalt jelly and what I'm doing is I'm just painting them diagonally across half of my nail. Again, doing it while the polishes are still wet so that they kind of blend together. And you can see this immediately created a really cool gradient effect of the glitter. So this is something that obviously would be super hard to do with a pink and a blue glitter topper. It wouldn't have this gradient effect, but because we have the jellies, it can kind of transform different polishes into a gradient. And the last manicure I want to show you is that you can always combine jellies. I know I've done this in a previous video where if you layer jellies over each other, you can actually create new colors. But one thing a few people have asked me about is can you layer jellies that have glitter or shimmer in them? And yes, you absolutely can. And that is another really fun way to create different nail polishes with polishes that you have. So I'm going in with these two iridescent jellies. This this first shade is Groove Thing and it's a really beautiful green, but it's very bright. So if I wanted a deeper, more almost teal green color with a little bit of darkness to it, I ended up actually 
sandwiching the shade Heart of Glass, which is this blue shade in between layers of groove thing. And now we've got this nice deep murky green kind of color. It's just really fun. I thought in this particular case, it was a really cool way to deepen up a color that I already had and loved, but felt very summery. And this almost feels like the autumnal version of it. So definitely fun to experiment. There are literally endless combinations you can do, or you can even pair an iridescent jelly underneath a regular sheer jelly. Honestly, endless combinations. So those are my super easy beginner friendly nail art looks and manicure looks using jelly nail polish polish. And seriously, I just think jellies are so useful, especially for beginners, but also for people who don't want to go through all of the effort of doing certain types of nail art looks. I think gradients are one of my favorite designs to wear on my nails, but they can be such a pain to do where you have to clean up around your skin. You have to use the little sponge and sometimes you don't have enough polish on your sponge. So then you get the little white dots on your nail. And I just feel like this is such a great shortcut. I have been doing this so much recently. I feel like this video could have been endless. I could do so many different nail art looks with jellies. And I think one of the things that stops people from trying jelly nail polish is because they see a solid jelly manicure and they think like, oh, I don't love the visible nail line. Oh, I just don't have nice nail beds for that. I have stained nail beds, something like that. And I think that there's just so many more ways to use jelly besides just wearing it. And the different ways that you can use jellies can cover up those things that you might not like to show on your nails. For example, if you do have stained nail beds or if you don't like having the visible nail line, there are still ways that you can use jelly that are so helpful. So hopefully this video has convinced you that jelly nail polish is absolutely awesome. But if it hasn't convinced you, I am taking that as a personal challenge because I am very excited that jellies are on trend right now and I want to continue using them. So if you have any requests for videos that you want to see using jelly nail polishes, leave them all in the comments. Or if there's any other type of nail art tutorial compilation that you want to see, you can also leave that down below. I am going to leave all of the polishes that I used down in the description so you can check those out if you're interested. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm doing a good job. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, please consider subscribing. I put in new videos every Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday. Huge shout out to my Cosmic Admirals on Patreon, Amanda M, Rocket Man's daughter, and Paula. I really appreciate your support and I will see you all in my next video. Bye. Today's one of my question comes from Patreon supporter Bake Up Little Susie and Bake Up Little Susie wants to know what character traits do you have that you strive to mitigate? First of all, I don't know if I've mentioned this recently, but I think I had a fun fact where I said mitigate is my favorite word because I just love the way it sounds. So great call on using that word. But let me think about the answer to this. <laughs> you know, I, I think I'm a very needy person. I always need reassurance from my loved ones and you know, even sometimes in professional settings, I always, I feel like I always worry that people are mad at me all the time and that people hate me for absolutely no reason. And I think a lot of that has to do with me having anxiety. I saw a tweet that was pretty funny, but also pretty accurate. And it was something like, I finally figured out a way to stop worrying about what other people think. I just need everybody every 15 minutes to tell me that they're not mad at me for the rest of my life. I really resonate with that. I, I hate that I have that because I, I find myself constantly worrying about things, especially with friends and family and loved ones, you know, just constantly asking them for reassurance for things. But I, I am trying to be better about it. I acknowledge that it's a very not ideal character trait and I do want to be better. So that is something that I'm currently working through. That's probably my worst character trait, I think. I'd like to think that. I don't know. Oh my gosh. See, now I'm actually doing that character trait because I'm thinking to myself, maybe I have a worse trait that nobody is telling me because they secretly hate me and I have this terrible trait and I don't even know it. So I'm trying to fix this other trait, but I think that's actually a perfect example of this character trait that I'm talking about right now, that people secretly have this terrible opinion of me. <laughs> Ooh, this was a really good fun fact question. Very serious one. But I do like opening up to you guys and sharing a little bit more about myself. That is it for today's video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.